What's going on guys, Psycho Killer here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Bedrock Survival Guide. Yo, in the last episode, I absolutely forgot to do a shout out of the day and a comment of the day. So we're gonna do last episode's comment of the day and shout out of the day at the beginning of this episode, and then we're gonna do this episode's at the end, and then we're gonna do our best to not to forget again. So today's comment of the day comes from, I'm sorry, last episode's comment of the day comes from Toxic Mute. Toxic Mute said, perfect first episode, hope you're doing well. I'm doing great, man, and I hope you guys are all enjoying this series. If you want your comment, to be featured in the next episode, comment on this one, and you might have a chance. Minecraft-related comments always go first. So, without any further ado, let's get to the shout-out of the day. The shout-out of the day for episode two, which we missed, is my buddy Rob himself. Rob is a Grand Theft Auto content creator. He has just under 100 subscribers, less than I do at the time of making this. He's growing quick. We're both going to hit 1,000 together. We're growing quickly this year. Definitely check this dude out. Rob himself is uh, an amazing content creator. Like I said, he does mostly GTA. He does weekly updates. He does shorts. Um, he does stream other games such as Vanguard and The Matrix Awakens, as you can see here. We've recently got him into playing Minecraft. He's actually part of my content creator realm. Uh, definitely check this dude out. Again, his name is Rob himself, and I will be putting the link to his channel in the description below. So, my dudes, in this episode, we are going to be exploring the caves that we found below, down there. And uh, we're definitely going to explore that mine shaft that we found in the last episode, as well as the rest of the cave. But I did want to show you this. I did bring in my supplies made some more chests i have a chest here for just random junk one here for you know stuff that comes from nature you know i guess logs stones stuff like that this is any kind of organics and foods stuff that can be planted or eaten and building materials here i got a crafting table in here as well as a furnace and a stone cutter my bed these things aren't going to permanently stay right here but it's good for now and i put a little you know booth here you can sit down, eat dinner, and look out. And the way we made that was just with uh, four stairs, two fences, and two trap doors. So, I've also been harvesting throughout the off time. And as you can see, we have upgraded to pork for our food. And I've got a couple other types of food in here that we're going to take with us. We are no longer taking sweet berries, but we're going to take this pork we're going to take this mutton and we're going to take the baked potatoes as i've been collecting the potatoes i've actually been baking them so this is what we're going to take with us as our food source for this episode and for this caving expedition other things you need to go caving with so you definitely want some sort of weapon i have a backup sword here just because this one's about done a couple pickaxes if you don't have as much iron as i do i recommend taking stone pickaxes and only one iron pickaxe uh, since we're not doing a whole lot of stone gathering and it's mostly going to be resource gathering i went ahead and took iron pickaxes because we have a decent amount of iron um, torches you can never have too many torches especially in these large caves i would say at least two stacks of torches um, i like to try to fill up this much but that's really all we have and i didn't want to make any sticks in addition to that you're going to want not an axe i mean you could take an axe i would keep it in the inventory if you know you're going to be exploring a mine shaft like we are go ahead and bring an axe as well as a pair of scissors which i didn't have but i'm going to go ahead and grab now because the scissors will be can be useful later and i'll explain why when that time comes you're going to want a bucket of water a stack of building blocks some shovels i just use stone shovels early game you're also going to want to bring some food in addition to that uh, absolutely 100 percent bring a stack of logs and I would bring some backup coal and some a little bit of backup iron if you have it. Again, a pair of scissors if you know you're going to find a mine shaft or if you're looking for one. And if you want, you could also bring a crafting table um, or you could just wait until you need it. I'm going to bring it anyways. And yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to use. So let's head down to the caves. I'll meet you guys at the bottom of the steps. So down here in this cave, we've got a couple of options of where we could go first. We could either go down there to the mine shaft, 
or we could go to the Lush Cave. Uh, th both of which we're going to cover today, but it's a matter of which one we want to cover first. I think I want to go to the Lush Cave first, but uh, on the way we are going to gather a little bit of resources, not a lot. Uh, the copper probably will be one of the main resources we gather. However, and the, of course, coal and yeah, redstone if we see some. However, we're not going to take a whole lot of all of the other resources. And here's why. We're going to come back down here at some point with Fortune 3. And with Fortune 3, we will be able to get even more of the resources than what we're able to gather without it. And if you look here, this is actually another vein. So we're going to leave that alone and come back to it. As you're moving through the caves, you're going to want to keep things lit up. Uh, we're going to grab some of this lapis lazuli as we see it as well. If you keep things lit up, spawns stay down. I think if we go this way, this will actually circle us back around to where that mine shaft was. Let's stick that torch there. Uh, this is where we get the iron before, and I'm pretty sure a lot of this turns into a vein. Um, I'm pretty sure, like I said, this is going to link us up with that mine shaft. Let's go ahead and go up here. Let's see. This would be the pool that we dug into. And as you can see inside of this pool are some glow squid, which we could easily use to get some glow ink from glow squid can spawn anywhere that's dark, um, in water. So we are not going to go that direction. We might look around here a little bit. I see some more iron over there. I think we're going to block this off. That should fix that issue. There might be some more source water down here. And then of course, this spot right here. And this is why we brought stacks of stone with us. Solid building blocks is we can cut off water. I find it so much easier to explore caves without the water. Uh, we're going to leave that lava where it's at because it might actually come in use later. So there is a water source block there, but we're not worried about it. We're going to go ahead and grab this iron that's here. And after we grab this iron, we're going to continue back the other direction into the caves. Um, when it comes time to reach that abandoned mine shaft, we will actually go through the branch mine that we made in the previous episode. So in Minecraft 1.18, ore generation was completely changed from what it used to be. So if you guys are old Minecraft players, um, but you haven't really checked out 1.18 yet, keep in mind that what you used to know about ore generation is no longer the same as what it was before. And we are going to talk about that as we mine through here. So in 1.18, uh, obviously 1.17 gave us copper. Um, copper can generate pretty much anywhere in your world, uh, but pre predominantly it's gonna exp it's gonna present itself in a vein with granite around it, much like we've seen with the iron in the last episode. or it's gonna present itself in some sort of blob as you see sometimes with a lot of the other ores. These veins and blobs can pop anywhere from Y0 all the way up to Y320. But if you're looking for copper, the best place to look is actually Y level 48. Y48 is gonna give you the most amount of copper in a more consistent basis. But the addition of copper and the way it generates is not the only change that was made. Uh, coal is also different now than you may remember it in previous versions of Minecraft. Uh, coal now can generate anywhere from Y0 all the way up to Y level 320. Of course, it still presents itself in a blob, generates in a blob, and it is most likely to be found at Y level 96. Let's continue battling these creepers. If they take out some of this stuff, no big deal. Iron can generate anywhere from Y level 0 to Y level 320 as well. But iron is, much like copper, 
can generate in the veins that we seen yesterday, which I'm pretty sure this is part of a vein right here. We're gonna go ahead and grab what's on the surface. I don't think we're gonna follow the vein because we have one thing in particular that we're looking for today, and that's gonna be diamonds. We want f three diamonds at least, I would say. Um, I would even go so far as to say five diamonds. Five diamonds would be awesome. So yes, iron generates anywhere from Y0 to Y320. And it too can generate in a blob or in the granite veins as we've seen in the last episode. Gold is another one that made slight changes. A lot of it made slight changes because the depth of the world has changed. Gold can be found anywhere from Y0 to Y320, of course and is most common at Y level negative 16. However, if you find a Badlands, the generation of gold is much higher there. You're gonna find, whoa, a whole lot more gold generating in Badlands biomes than anywhere else, and we need to eat before we die. So we've covered copper, coal, We've covered iron and we've covered gold. That leaves us with four more resources. One of those resources is emeralds. Emerald ore is only found in mountain biomes. Now, keep in mind that biomes, whether you're on the surface or underground, like we are right now, will stretch from the top of the world to the bottom of the world and you always be in that biome for those of you that are playing on java edition and you're able to use the f3 screen to look at you know what biome you're in if you're deep in a cave like this you will still be in whatever biome is present on the surface the only exception to that however is if between the top and bottom of the world you find yourself in a lush cave biome or a dripstone cave biome, the biome name will actually change to match that, but only for the height of the biome. It will then once again change back down. So as long as you're in a mountain biome, you can go as deep as you want and find the emerald ore anywhere from Y negative 16 to Y 320. However, it is more common near the tops of the mountains. The other three resources that we have not covered yet, the other three ores, lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli can be found anywhere from Y negative 64 to Y positive 64. Lapis lazuli is one of the most useful items in the game because it can be used not only to make blue dye, but lapis lazuli can also be used for enchanting. And enchant whoa, I didn't even see that creeper. And enchanting is basically what makes, <laughs> it's the motivation for a lot of the game. Whoa, another one. The motivation for a lot of the game, especially early game, is being able to enchant and get to where you can do enchantments and stuff. So, man, our inventory is already full. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to lay down our crafting table right here, and we are going to craft all of these coppers into copper blocks. So that'll take up a little bit less space. And then we are going to trash a bunch of the trash. But first, let's pick up this gold. Are we full again already? Yes, we are. All right, so we're gonna throw a lot of this trash out to include the gold armor which is absolutely useless to us and the slime because the slime can easily be gotten later so the lapis as i said uh, is the basis for enchanting um, and enchanting is a lot of the early motivation in the game is getting yourself ready to enchant uh, that's why we're looking for five instead of three diamonds um, that's where you know i was talking about fortune three and such uh, those things, that's that's enchanting, and enchanting is a big, huge part of the game. Uh, not just a big part, not just a huge part, but a big, huge part, as I said. 
Uh, diamonds are a big deal. And that's why we haven't went... Oh my goodness! What's up, little guy? Come back here. Uh, yeah. So, Lapis. Now we're going to cover Redstone. Redstone can be found in blobs. Anywhere from Y-64 to Y-15. But the most common spot to find the redstone is at Y-32. The most common spot to find lapis is anywhere from negative 32 to positive 32. And as you can see, we're getting deeper into the, you know, down to the blackstone, blackstone deep slate areas. And here's our first bit of redstone. And while we're on redstone, this is actually perfect timing. As you can see, the redstone and all the other ores can present themselves in either stone or deep slate. Um, much like stone and deep slate both being able to generate ores, stone, co cobblestone and cobble deep slate can both be used to make stone tools. Anything that you can use cobblestone for, you can also use cobbled deep slate for. But we're gonna go ahead and take this here redstone, and move on. We got more trash to get rid of. Uh, we'll get rid of the spider eyes and stick with that. So we're gonna move down slowly, light up the deep slate, and try to kill as many mobs as we can while not dying. So we're gonna move back up, try to lure the skeleton up with us. We just move back and forth, lighting up areas and moving around as long as you stay with a not hungry, you know, you should be all right. Skeletons further away, if you keep them further away and you move back and forth like this, they can't shoot you. You just dodge the arrows and it gives you time to fill up some health and then, you know, you can move closer and go in for the attack and then get back out of there. There's another skeleton there. If we're lucky, yes. We can get that skeleton to attack that zombie and then they can fight each other. And then we can move in, take out the skeleton, and then the zombie. Use the mobs against each other. So, we talked about redstone. Redstone is most likely to generate between, like I said, level, or on level negative 32. So the last ore, and in my opinion, the most important ore, is diamonds. Diamonds are forever. We've all heard those ads, how important diamonds are. Diamonds are especially important in Minecraft, as they are the basis of the whoop, whoop, best tools in the game. Um, even, even netherite tools are best made out of diamond. So diamond can generate anywhere below Y0, which is deep slate level. Diamond ore is most common the further down you go. So if you get all the way down to deep slate level, or I'm sorry, to bedrock level, Y negative 64, and start strip mining down there or branch mining, however you choose to do it, whether it's in a straight line or branching off, that's gonna be the best place to find your diamond ores. And that is actually where we are trying to head. Uh, y negative 64 if we get down there in the open. <clears throat> and then if we haven't seen five pieces of diamond yet, ooh, I got hit by slowness. That witch must be following us. There's a creeper. Yes. Now get the heck out of there. Although we are poisoned, we cannot die from poison. But we can be poisoned and die from something else. So our goal is just going to be to stay away from the other mobs until we get some of that health generated back. Make sure there's nothing behind us if we are fighting other mobs. And let that health generate back. So if we can get down to Y0... I'm sorry, Y negative 64, and we haven't seen any diamond ore yet, which there's two pieces right there. We haven't got any diamond ore yet. We will start branch mining for our diamond ore. 
but I'm trying to keep it entertaining. So there you go. There is the new ore generation in 1.18. Uh, to cover up the hot spots again, coal is best found at Y level 96. Copper is best found at Y 90. I'm sorry, Y 48. I knew that was coming. Diamond is found, you know, the deeper down you go, the better the chances, but especially down at bedrock level at Y negative 64. Emerald is found in mountain biomes only, and the further up you are, the better your chances of getting that emerald. Gold is found in veins and blobs, especially at Y negative 16, but it is more common in the Badland biomes than it is in the other biomes. Iron is found predominantly at Y225, Y16, and negative 60 to negative 32. Those are the best ways to find those. Dodging arrows here, try not to die. And lapis is found anywhere from negative 32 to 32. Those are the best places. And redstone at Y negative 32. So we're gonna keep moving through this cave here. We're gonna try to get ourselves down to Y negative 64. We're gonna grab three more pieces of diamond after we finish dying. No big deal, we can get back down there. And here we are, back down here with our stuff. Um, if anything picked our stuff up, like a zombie or something, the zombie will still be here. So we don't have to worry about that being an issue, you know, a zombie grabbing our stuff and despawning. Um, the only thing we would have to worry about is if we were close by our stuff and couldn't find it, then we would have to worry about it despawning at that point. So we're gonna have to put our gear back on. We're still missing a helmet somewhere. Um, at very worst case, a zombie or something is wearing the helmet. Uh, I could be here. We're gonna have to keep cycling through here, getting rid of stuff we don't need. And I think we've got everything except for, oh, no. Yeah, so the only thing we're missing is our helmet, which is also not a big deal. Um, these monsters are going to keep pathfinding themselves to us. So, as I said, we're going to try... Whoa, I did not see you. We're going to try to pathfind our way down to uh, Y-64 if we can. It looks like this goes down further. Um, hopefully, we see some more diamond on the way so we don't have to do any more branch mining today. But if not, you know, no big deal. We'll get ourselves down there, which it looks like we're going to get there. This is going down pretty steep. Uh, we might have to dig a little bit, which is cool. Go here. Let's actually do that. Slap the torch up here. And we're just going to dig our way down. So we'll keep going down. So, like I said, why negative 64 is going to be the best place to find diamond? We need three more diamond. We need three diamond to make a diamond pickaxe and another two diamond to make an enchanting setup or an enchanting table. Uh, the diamond pickaxe is what we absolutely have to have to mine the obsidian that is also needed to make an enchanting table. Uh, as I said, enchanting is one of the early goals of the game. Enchanting is amazing thing. I cannot wait to cover it. And um, going into the nether and going to fight the dragon without doing enchantments is extremely dangerous. So we're going to cover enchantments early. Although we're not going to be fighting the dragon early. We will be completely geared up and ready to fight the dragon by the time that time comes. Uh, probably long before that. But for now, let's just focus on getting the diamonds that we need to make the enchanting table. We're gonna have to step ourselves down to Y negative 64. Whoa, lava. 
because this obviously does not go that low and we still need just three more diamonds which we will find quickly as you will see as we step step ourselves down the diamonds will pretty much come to us with minimal amount of work so we're gonna just stair step our way down to y negative 64 um, <laughs> we've already run into a little bit of bedrock here so we're gonna start right here on this level of bedrock and we're gonna branch ourselves a straight line to y I'm sorry z we're just gonna branch ourselves in a straight line along the Z coordinate, we'll probably run to Z negative 680, I believe. Yes, yeah, 680.
All right, so we made it a hundred blocks out instead of 50. So we went to 730 instead of 680. Now we're going to start branching off the sides. Again, here, skip, skip, here, and see if we can find any diamonds because we haven't found any yet. So as I was looking for someplace else to go just exploring for diamonds, I was moving around because the strip mine wasn't really working out. I found this here. There's two more diamonds there, and we're going to go ahead and dig around it real quick. Just see if there's any more, but I highly doubt it. And if there's no more diamonds here, we're going to go ahead and head back to the starting area of the cave. Because I've seen where the cave went down really low before there, and that might be a really good spot to go caving. So I'll see you guys over there. So back here at the starting area, as you see, there's some levels down there on the ground, which means where we were at prior was actually right below where we started. And on top of that, I also like my mines to be right close to each other. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the strip mine for the iron at Y16. We're gonna mine down to Y negative 64-ish as we did over there. And that's where we're gonna start our strip mine here so it's close to the entrance. So with a slight change of plans, as I was stair-stepping down, I found a little cave close to the bottom that looked like it was going further down. So naturally, of course, I decided to check into the cave, and I did find a little bit of diamonds here. So hopefully these one diamonds actually turn into two. Let's look around. It's actually just one diamond. So we still need one more diamond, and I think the best thing to do is going to be to follow this lava. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to find this diamond, and then I'll see you guys. And here are the rest of our diamonds. I went ahead and started strip mining down where that lava pit was at. We're gonna grab what we have here for the diamonds and I'll meet you guys back on the surface. So we actually have 10 diamonds, dudes, 10 diamonds. That's fucking awesome. So we're gonna smelt up the iron that we picked up here. And uh, during the off time between episodes, I'm going to harvest these cows up, get some leather and some books. And in the next episode, we're gonna talk about enchanting and enchantments, the enchantment setup, what's needed for all that and that kind of stuff. But that has been it for this episode of the Minecraft. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop that outro. Future Psycho here. Today's shout out of the day for this episode is my guy, Rufus the Red. Rufus the Red is a Rockstar Games YouTuber primarily in Red Dead Redemption Online. Rufus the Red releases a video every single day that tells you the Madame Nazar location, 
and the daily challenges for that particular day. Most days, I try to share that on my community tab as well. He also plays other Rockstar games like Bully and Grand Theft Auto Online. Make sure you check him out. His channel is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Rufus the Red. The link to that will be in the description down below. And today's comment of the day is from Ronan Miller. Ronan Miller says, you're really getting me into Minecraft again. Well, that's the goal, man. Most people come to my channel for Rockstar-related content, and I'm trying to spread the love of my community into other games, especially Minecraft, because I have an absolute love for Minecraft. So I'm glad I'm getting you into it. Um, yeah, let me know any kind of builds or anything you do, man. I uh, would love to see them. Maybe showcase them in future episodes. Bedrock Survival Guide. Comment down below. Um, let me know if there's anything you do different when you're mining than what I do. And uh, yo, if it was enjoyable, make sure you smash the like button. And if you're new, so consider subscribing, turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on the next episode. And as always, my guys, I will see you on the flip side.